Hello and welcome to another YouTube video. In today's video, I want to share what plan I made and what resources I used to teach myself more data science. Like you've already seen in the title, I'm currently doing something that I called 100 days of data science. Basically, the only two rules that I have for this is that I want to study something related to data science for at least five minutes and I also tweet about it on my Twitter. Now, obviously you can share wherever you want. Now, I'm not saying I invented this. Uh, I was very much inspired by two things, actually. The first thing is Kenji's 66 days of data, which is basically the same challenge as I just said, except I'm gonna do it for 100 days because the second thing I was inspired by is 100 days of code. Um, I've tried 100 days of code before and since I often want to study something like mathematics or maybe some statistics, coding every day wasn't really what I was looking for. So I adapted it a bit and made it uh, 100 days of data science. So my 100 days started on December 16th and will end, if I calculate it correctly, on the 25th of March next year. Because data science is an incredibly broad field, studying something related to it can mean basically anything I'm interested in. It can be uh, some mathematical concepts like statistics or linear algebra, and it also can be coding in Python or SQL. And of course, data science also involves a lot of machine learning and also if you want deep learning. So what do I want to learn and how am I going to do it? One of the things I want to do is learn or relearn the most commonly used machine learning algorithms. So I want to relearn what a decision tree is, how clustering works, how a linear regression is applied and all of those things like how do they work and how do you apply them because in university we didn't really apply algorithms to big data sets. So for the machine learning basics I'm using Jose Patilla's course on Udemy which is called Python for Data Science and Machine Learning Bootcamp. I purchased this over two years ago at this point and it's time to finally go through the course and learn everything from it. He gives examples and projects for every single algorithm that he shows. And he also quickly tells you how it works and the theory, but very, very quickly. And because I want to go a bit more in depth on the theory of each algorithm, I will also be consulting a few books. And one of these books is an introduction to statistical learning with applications in R by James Witten, Hasty, and Tip Shirani. And this gives me a bit more information about the statistics and background of it. Related to that, I also want to learn some basic statistics. Now, you might think after studying mathematics in university, I would know statistics, but I don't. It was not covered in my bachelor's degree. I actually have no deeper knowledge of what A B testing is, except the most basic thing that you can think of. And Stat Twitter would be enraged to know that I have no idea what a p-value is and I desperately want to know so I can also laugh at all the p-value memes on Twitter. Now for that I also want to consult the introduction to statistical learning book that I just showed you and I also have another book which is called Practical Statistics for Data Scientists. I also bought this classic with it which is the elements of statistical learning and I started reading it, but I realized that it's a bit advanced and I should probably read some easier statistics books first. And then finally, I want to read the deep learning book by Ian Goodfellow, Joshua Bengio and Aaron Courville. And you might be thinking, deep learning, didn't you want to learn data science? And you would be right. But actually, this book, which you can read for free online, by the way, deeplearningbook.org, um, also covers the basics of everything that you need for uh, deep learning, basically. So the first chapter gives you the basics of linear algebra, and then there's also basics of probability and information theory in there. And then it also covers some basic machine learning things like decision trees and what a test set and training set and stuff actually are. So this is also good for some basics of ML and data science. And because I personally in my data science job will also be working with neural networks and object detection and all of that stuff, um, I can continue learning about deep learning, which 
is kind of like a passion of mine and an interest of mine. Another thing that is not taught a lot in my university, but is really useful when you have a job or you are doing practical data science is dashboarding. And as far as my understanding goes, dashboarding is just basically visualizing your data and arranging it in a nice way on like a dashboard on like a web page, for example, or another page where you have multiple statistics about your data and you visualize them. You can do this with tools like Power BI or Tableau or all of that stuff. But and I think you can do this with very little coding knowledge. But since I love using Python, I was interested in learning Plotly and Dash. These are two Python libraries that allow you to visualize data and create a dashboard, like I just told you. And for that one, just for the start, I will use another Udemy course to which I have access through my workplace. And that is also from Jose Patilla on Udemy. And I will also link it down below. And finally, I would encourage everyone that is interested in learning data science or even coding to do one of those 100 days off challenges because they really encourage you to do something, even if it's very small, every single day. Like, you can really find five minutes to study something pretty much every day, even on Christmas or something. I mean, it's only five minutes. You can do it on the toilet. Like, you know, it's really simple. And it makes learning something very overwhelming and big manageable by just having little chunks. But I think the most important thing to do this and to stick with it is to have a plan so I know that when I have five minutes, I just open my book to the last page I've read and I just continue reading for five minutes. But if you don't know what to do next on each day, then you might be procrastinating and being like, oh, but I don't know what to study. But that's why you need a specific plan of what to study. And don't waste too much time on selecting the best learning resource out there. Just pick one of them that seems good enough and just do that and finish it. Most of these recommended learning resources are pretty good and there is no best learning resource out there. The best one is that one that you can stick with and actually learn from it. I will continue to share my progress here and of course every day on Twitter so feel free to follow along and thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!